Welcome to Freedom Youth, Term 2, Week 3. Today, we have something special for you. But before we get to that, we've just got a couple little videos. So, stay tuned. <laughs> hey, that is my hair okay? Yes. Good afternoon. <coughs> you gas truck. <laughs> good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Church starts at good. six. Buddy, you are under arrest for stealing a C3 hoodie. I'm placing you under arrest. Remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. If you've not had a lawyer, you will receive one at an appropriate time. What do you have to say about this? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed those short videos. Uh, we're just about to hear from a really close friend of Catherine and mine. Um, she has put a lot of effort into this talk that she's sharing with us today. And we really hope you enjoy it, benefit from it, and get a lot out of it. But before we go into that, I'm just going to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your goodness, Lord. We just thank you for this beautiful day you have made. Uh, we just pray that tonight as um, we hear from Danielle Martin and she has to share with us that you would speak to us each personally and individually Lord that you would reveal to us the things that we need to work on in our lives the areas that we need to um, be maybe talking to you about and asking you to start changing and working on our hearts and in our lives in those areas so we just pray um, for your um, your wisdom and uh, in our own lives Lord and we just um, Hi guys, my name is Danielle Martin, and many of you guys probably know my husband, Nathan. He's come and spoke for you guys as youth group um, in the past, and so I'm actually really excited to be able to share with you guys some thoughts um, virtually, and hopefully one day I'll be able to actually be able to come to your youth group and meet you guys face to face, but until then, this will have to do. So um, what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is share some thoughts on what we do as Christians matter. Um, why does it matter what we do? Why does it matter what we say or what we wear? Um, what's the point? Um, if we know where our heart stands, why does it matter what we say, do, and think? Um, and I'm just going to explain to you guys just, just some of my thoughts of what I have and why it's important. Um, so I kind of just want to paint a picture for you guys. Um, just imagine you're, you're standing there and someone's coming towards you to talk to you and um, automatically when a person's walking towards you and you see them coming you start making some observations about them um, either what they're wearing like oh this person's wearing a yellow shirt walking towards me they have brown hair and they're smiling uh, so you're you're taking in these observations of what they're coming so when they actually come to you you know it's like okay this person's probably in a good mood um, or be like hey that shirt's really bright you know you're making these observations you're not you're not necessarily judging them being like oh they're in a yellow shirt or why are they smiling this is not the time to smile or whatever the case is um you're just making simple observations about them when they're coming so that already starts the the process of us knowing that we're we're observing what people are wearing we're observing the demeanor in their spirit coming towards us if they're happy sad mad glad whatever like we are making these observations as they're coming towards us um and so when we start thinking that that, that way it actually really does matter what's going on on the outside people are making observations about us as christians um when we go through certain trials sometimes people who are not saved are watching us being like okay how are they going to handle this are they going to say something they shouldn't or they can do something they shouldn't people are watching what we're doing as christians and um a lot of times it comes back to our heart and when i grew up going to youth group and a lot of times if i ever messed up with something 
my youth leader would always tell me, she's like, it's a heart issue, it's a heart issue. And it actually kind of annoyed me for a while because I just didn't want to hear it. And I was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It was just this or that, whatever, you know, it's not a heart issue. But as I got to know the scriptures more and the more I've spent reading the Bible, I actually come to the conclusion that she was right. It, it usually is a heart issue. Everything comes back to the heart. Um, and so I'm going to share some verses. There's actually lots of verses in the Bible that talk about the heart in different ways, different aspects and whatever. But this, there's three specific verses I'm going to share with you guys that um, have meant a lot to me in this area and have always come back to help refocus my heart and mind on what really matters and the big picture of what we're trying to accomplish as Christians here on earth. Uh, the first verse is Proverbs 27, 19. And that says, as in water, face reflects face. So the heart of man reflects the man. Matthew 12, 34 says, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in a different translation, it says, uh, just the last part of that verse, it says, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Um, and then Proverbs 4.23, it says, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. And in a different uh, version of the Bible, it says, uh, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And um, I just thought it was interesting that the, the use of how our heart determines what we say or what we do. Um, it's, it's actually very interesting how everything comes back to the heart. And so I'm going to share with you guys three practical areas on why what we do matters. Um, and I'm just going to touch on three different things, what we wear, what we say, and our actions, and how those all matter as Christians. Um, I do want to give you guys just a disclaimer. Um, the things I talk about are very outward, so I don't want you to get confused or anyone to get confused that if you say or do or wear the right thing, you're more Christian or you are a Christian, you know. Uh, we all know that um, it all comes, these are just, these two to three different things are just outwards expressions of our faith and we need to keep that in mind. That it doesn't mean we're more saved than the other person or this means that we are Christian because we do these things. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is why what we wear matters as Christians. Um, and again, the verses above help us be able to understand that our heart reflects our life, basically. Or our heart reflects what we do and what we say. Um, for instance, if you wear a tank top, you're not less of a Christian than the person who wears a skitty or, you know, is wearing a high necked jersey or something. You're not necessarily more Christian than the other person. There's pieces of clothing are inadvertently evil. You know, clothes are clothes, you know, and we need to keep it that way. But there's qu bigger questions and probably more vague questions we can ask ourselves about what makes us choose certain clothing. One thing is, why do we choose to put on what we do? What's our motive? Um, are we trying to draw attention to ourselves, draw attention to certain body parts um, that probably don't need a lot of attention? Um, are we trying to build our ego or make us seem a certain way that we're really not? Are we trying to hide behind what's going on with us by what we wear and etc.? cetera? Um, when we think about these big questions, it kind of seems so far-fetched. It's like, it's just clothes. So why are we asking these big questions that seem kind of like life altering? Um, but it's necessary for us to be able to examine our motives for things, especially when it comes to representing Jesus Christ. Um, and, and I'm not saying that you know, you can't be trendy, you shouldn't be trendy or anything like that. And just because you wear something, you just think it's cute. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with keeping up with the trends. But it's important to think of those questions of why are we wearing what we're wearing? Like, what's the, what deep down, what's the reason why we're doing this? It's good to ask ourselves these questions. And on top of that, we need to think of other people as well. We, what might be okay for us might not be okay for someone else. And when we prefer one another, 
we actually be like, you know what, it's not worth compromising my friendship with this person or being able to attend this certain event just because I want to wear what I want to wear, you know? That right there is a huge indication that we're more concerned about ourselves than we are at maybe learning or connecting with people. Um, for instance, take the example of togs. When you go and um, go to the beach or go to a pool, it's expected that you're probably going to wear togs. You know what I mean? But if you go to a nice restaurant and go out to dinner or you go to Kmart or the supermarket or something, chances are you're probably not going to wear togs. Or if you work in a, like an office or something, you're not going to wear togs to work. You know what I mean? Like people are going to be like, something's off. Like that's not what you wear to an office. That's not what you wear shopping. Um, so there's things like that. There's context even within what we're wearing. And um, so those are also very much uh, things we need to think about. Um, I looked up the word modesty because um, I think that's actually, that is um, thrown around quite a bit. And I think very loosely. And I loved what I found. Um, it says standards of modesty are culturally and context dependent and very widely. Um, and I think that's so true that um, certain cultures have a different level of modesty that's okay for them but not okay for us and i think a lot of times we don't want culture to drive our faith and i'm not saying culture should drive our faith but we should take culture into account on what might be okay and what might not be okay this will draw more attention to certain body parts whereas this it's still very cute but you know what it's not leaving you know it's not putting people out or distracting them from what's really important or the things that you're trying to accomplish in a certain conversation or in a group setting or whatever. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, and there's probably a lot more I can say about what we wear, but I'll just leave it there. So the second thing is what we say matters. Um, I don't believe the Bible gives us a certain list of words, specific words that we can or cannot say. And again, I think culture comes into play with this again. Um, words aren't bad. I think there's certain words that within a cultural context are considered bad words. And I think we don't have to really leave much up to the imagination. I'm sure we've all heard certain bad words here and there, um, or a lot. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm not going to go any further than that. But, um, what we say and even often our tone, um, as Christians can be crucial and if we're coming off a certain way, and I think the Bible talks a lot about, um, not necessarily tone, but I guess the characteristics of our words. Um, one verse that I really like uh, to go back to is Ephesians 4.29, and it says, Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Um, when we talk, we don't want people to steer them away from knowing Jesus or being encouraged in their faith. That's what we want. And, um, and hopefully that's what we want. And so we need to think about those things, um, as well that our tongue can cause a lot of strife. Um, but within that, just because we're okay with saying something, someone else might not be as okay with that. 1 Corinthians 6, 12, and I'm just kind of taking a little snippet of this verse. Um, you guys can go back and maybe just read the par paragraph that says verses or surrounding to get a bit more context, but for the sake of time, I'm just reading this little part. Sorry, my notes are down here. That's why I keep pointing down. <laughs> so um, 1 Corinthians 6, 12, um, it's just a little snippet. It says, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. And every time I go back to that and the different things, the thing, my personal takeaway for this is just because you can doesn't mean you should and um, I think that's such a good concept to keep in mind I know it really helps me with the having that spirit of entitlement being like well I can because I don't struggle with it or I don't you know find it bad but someone else might be offended by that and again we come back to our hearts and we come back to the big picture of what we're trying to accomplish if you've feel like your right to do something is more important than someone else's spiritual well-being, there's a bigger problem there and there is a heart issue that needs to be addressed at that point. 
And so we need to be careful and cautious about the words that we choose to use. And oftentimes, if we don't know if we can come across, you know, in an encouraging way, there's nothing wrong with just keeping your mouth shut. Like, I struggle with that because I feel like sometimes I'm, I feel like sometimes I am a very opinionated person at times. And sometimes when I get real riled up, it's hard to reel back in, you know? And so I know this about myself. My husband knows this about me. And so he, he often has to help me reel it back in. Um, and sometimes it's just best for me not to even attend certain meetings or just keep my mouth shut or I'll tell him what I, my thoughts so he can address it in a more constructive way. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I do with that. And that's, that's why, cause I want my words to be able to reflect Jesus. I want people to be encouraged by what I say, or sometimes be challenged by what I say, um, and not be distracted or be drawn away more from Christ, um, than they might've already been. And the third thing is what we do matters. And this is more about our actions. Um, what we do or what we don't do often can speak volumes about our character. Um, just simple things about where we choose to go and where we don't choose to go. Um, what movies we choose to watch and what movies we don't watch can actually speak volumes about our character, about our faith, um, about where we stand on certain things and how we want to keep our hearts and mind pure and as um, less tainted, I guess, as possible. Um, and like I said, it goes back to that verse that I said in 1 Corinthians 6, that just because we can doesn't mean we should. And again, it comes back to preferring one another and it comes back to the state of our hearts. Again, if we are putting, we want to put our rights and our abilities could do something above the well-being of somebody else or the spiritual well-being of somebody else, there is a problem there. And that's the problem we need to address, not necessarily the movie that you're wanting to watch or the music you want to listen to or the clothes that you're choosing to wear. It's the heart. What are you trying to do with your heart? What do you, what do you want to accomplish by being on this earth, by, you know, how you want to reflect your heart. Um, if we're growing Christians and we want to do the best we can um, to represent Jesus Christ, to be a light in this world, um, these questions, what our motives are, why are we doing what we're doing, why do we choose to do the things that we do, are some really good questions for us to ask. And so... Wrapping it all up, um, I want you guys to be able to just um, take some of these questions and just think about it. it can, and for some of you, this might be a bit overwhelming um, and kind of like a big subject, but I encourage you to talk to your youth leaders, talk to Nathan and Catherine, talk to your parents uh, if you have that relationship or someone in the church or something like that or a trusted friend or something that you guys can talk through some of these, you know, these topics with. Um, it'll be so important and you just start somewhere and you know what you might not get it right every single time and you might think something's okay and then you do it and you're like oh maybe I shouldn't have done that that's okay that's part of the learning process and so we need to learn to give ourselves grace and understand that that comes from the grace of God and his love and care for us and that he forgives and then he loves us um, and so I really hope that this has been encouraging for you guys and um, hopefully it didn't create more questions for you and maybe confuse you a bit more. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your night and talk to you later.